everybody. Well, Happy New Year. I hope you guys enjoyed your Christmas and your New Year with your families. It's crazy to think it's another year, 2021, but thank God for another year. And I look forward to all the art projects we get to do together this year. Our first project of the year is going to be these winter bird houses. I hope you guys really enjoy this project. This project's gonna give you a chance to really think outside the box and use your creativity and hopefully just have some fun. So why don't I tell you what you need and we'll get started. The materials you're going to need for this month's project is a piece of white drawing paper. If you don't have a drawing pad, just grab a piece of copy paper and actually, um, you might want to grab a couple pieces, uh, depending if you have construction paper or not. If you have your pack of construction paper, go ahead and grab that. But if you do not have construction paper, you can still do this project. You'll just need a couple pieces of your drawing, white drawing paper or copy paper. You're going to want your markers, crayons, or colored pencils. It's going to be up to you which ones you want to use, so just have those nearby. A pencil an eraser, a pair of scissors, and either your white glue or your glue stick, whichever is handy. Okay, let's get started. The first step to this project is drawing our birdhouse. Now, as you can see, my birdhouse is already cut out. Um, at the end, I'm gonna show you how to assemble your project. So um, you will see my project in pieces during this video, but we will put it together at the end. But what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how to draw a basic house shape for a birdhouse. Now, if you want to draw a basic house shape like I have here, you can follow along with me. But if you want to think outside the box and use your imagination, you can get very creative with your birdhouse. Your birdhouse doesn't have to look like a traditional house. Maybe you play basketball or volleyball and maybe you want to draw a circle and make your birdhouse look like a basketball or a volleyball. Maybe you want to make it a heart shape. Maybe you want to make it look like a teapot or a shoe. You can just get very creative um, with what you want to do with your birdhouse. Or you can just draw a basic traditional house like I'm going to show you. The first thing we're going to do is get our white piece of paper. And if you have a roller, you can grab that or any kind of straight edge. But if you just wanna eye this, or if you are drawing your own birdhouse and your own shape, you may not need this ruler. I'm gonna go ahead and use it and um, draw my lines with it. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to just draw a basic square. Now we are going to be cutting these birdhouses out. So I am just using the bottom of my paper as the bottom of my square. So I'm just going to be drawing three lines. Now you can make your birdhouse as wide or as thin, as short or as tall as you want it. The only thing you wanna keep in mind is you wanna make sure you keep enough room at the top to put your bird, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a straight line And my birdhouse, if you're wondering, is just approximately, oh, a little over four and a half inches high with my square part. And then I'm going to draw another line on the other side to create the two sides of my square, the vertical sides of my square. And then I'm going to draw a line across the top to create the top horizontal line of my square. And my birdhouse is about five and a half inches wide, if any of you are wondering. So you should have a square. And that is going to be the base of your house. 
The next step to drawing our birdhouse is drawing the top of our birdhouse. And that is going to just be a basic triangle. So what you're going to do, and honestly, I just eyed this. I just kind of eyed the center of the top of my square line. And then I just followed that up and just put a point about where I want the peak of my roof to be. And then I took my ruler and I connected that point to the corner of my square. And I actually drew the line down just a little farther so the roof extended past the base of my house. So I'll show you here. So you should have something like that. And then you do the same to the other side of the house. And now you have a roof on your house. Now we are going to make this a little wider to show the trim or the front of the roof, okay? Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start at the peak of the house and we're going to go up about, oh, three quarters to an inch up. It doesn't really matter. It depends. It's kind of up to you. However thick you want your roof line to be, that's as far as you want to go up. And you're going to put another dot. And then I'm going to just draw a parallel line starting from that dot down towards the bottom of my roof line and then I'm going to connect those two lines with a straight horizontal line something like this and then you'll go ahead and you'll do that to this, the other side. And now you should have the basic shape of your birdhouse. Now that we have the basic shape of our birdhouse drawn, the fun part comes in thinking about how we want to decorate and design our birdhouse. Now, as you can see, I gave my birdhouse some vertical shingles across the top here, and then I drew some horizontal lines across the base to represent like siding of a house or slabs of wood. And then I just gave it some flowers to make it look a little prettier and brighter and more colorful. But maybe you want to uh, do something totally different. Maybe you want to think of a theme like space and you could put the sun and some stars and some planets. Maybe you want to color each slab of wood a different color and make it look like a rainbow. Maybe you want to just cover it with hearts or you want to do flowers too. That's fine. Maybe you have a favorite sports team and you want to make the birdhouse the colors of your favorite sports team. Just think outside the box and have fun with deciding how you want to decorate and design your birdhouse. Now I will show you how I did the vertical shingles at the top and drew the horizontal lines across but you do not have to do this part. If you are doing something um, on your own go ahead and just start designing and decorating your birdhouse. And um, those of you who want to do the vertical shingles, just go ahead and watch the next step and I'll show you how to do that. To do the vertical shingles across the top of the birdhouse, all I did was take my ruler. Now, again, you do not have to use a ruler. You can just eye this, um, it's up to you. But what I did is I just kind of 
put my ruler in the center of the peak of my roof here and I just tried to make it as straight as I could by eyeing it and I just drew two vertical lines down. Notice that I'm crossing the top of my square and these do not have to be even because if you noticed, I made mine look uneven. So don't worry about having these perfect. Now if you want them straight across and all the same length, you can do that. Okay, once I did that, I moved my ruler over and I lined up the left side of my ruler to the line I just drew. And I drew another vertical line down along the right side of my ruler. And then I went and did the same thing on the other side, lining my right side of my ruler up with the line I just drew and then drew a vertical line down along the left side of my ruler. Now once I had my vertical lines drawn, all I did was go in and connect those lines at the bottom with some horizontal lines. And as you can see here, these lines that are on the outside I just connect it to the side of my birdhouse. And then once you have your horizontal lines drawn, you just need to go in and you just need to erase the top of your square. Now that we have our vertical slabs or shingles drawn, we're going to go ahead and draw the horizontal lines across the base of our birdhouse. So what I did is I just took my ruler and I just put it across the bottom of my vertical shingles and then I just drew a line across the bottom of my ruler. And that's where I got this vertical line. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put the top of my ruler along that line I just drew and then draw another line across the bottom of my ruler. And I'm going to repeat that process until I get down to the bottom of my paper. And so you should have something that looks like this. Now I just want to remind you guys to not forget to put a door in for your birdhouse. Okay? So you can make a traditional circle or you can make it a heart shape, a star shape, whatever shape you want. But just remember to put a door on your birdhouse so your birdie has a place to get in and out. And then as you see, I also just drew a slanted line here to create a little place for my birdie to sit. Now at this point, you should go ahead, um, finish drawing your design for your birdhouse, and then we will move to the next step. Now that we have our bird houses drawn, we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw our bird. Now, if you have room, again, we're cutting these out. So if you have room at the top of the paper where you drew your bird house, feel free to just save some paper and draw it up in the corner. But if you're not sure you're going to have enough room, then go ahead and grab another piece of white paper, okay? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the bird's body. And all I did is I just drew a big oval.
something like that. Once I had the body drawn, I come up here and I'm going to just draw a circle that's overlapping my oval just a little bit for the bird's head. So you should have something that looks like this. Now go ahead and take your eraser and erase that line that's inside of your circle for your head because you don't want to see that. Now I'm re just to remind you guys, I'm sorry, I should have reminded you earlier in the video, I am pressing hard with my pencil so you guys can see it on the camera, but you don't want to press really hard because as I've mentioned before, these pencil lines can, can show through when you color over them. So again, you don't have to press really hard. Um, you just need to press hard enough that you can see it, what you're drawing, but not so hard that it shows through when you erase it. See, like right there, like I did. Again, I'm just pressing hard so you can see it on camera. Now that you have the body and the head drawn, we're going to go ahead and give it a wing. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a teardrop. And we're going to draw it sideways. And we are going to start at the top of the body behind the head. And we're going to draw our rounded part of our teardrop. And then we're going to just bring it down towards the back of the bird. Stop where the point of the teardrop is going to be back up. So I'll show you here. And you should have something that looks like this. And again, after you have the wing drawn, go in and erase that line that's in the middle of your wing because you don't want to see that. Now that we have the wing drawn, we're going to give it a tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here underneath the wing at the back of the bird's body, and we are going to just draw something that resembles a triangle. And you can make your birdie's tail as long or as short as you want it to be. So I'm just gonna start under the wing at the back of the body, and I'm just going to draw a triangular shape to give my birdie a tail. Once you have the tail drawn, we're gonna go up and on the front of the bird's face, we're going to just draw another triangular shape to give it a beak. And then finally, we can come and give our little bird an eye. You can just draw a little circle, or I'm actually going to draw a sideways number six, like this. <laughs> and it's actually backwards, but you get the idea. See the number six? It's just backwards and upside down. But you can draw whatever kind of eye you want for your little bird. And that is your bird. Now that you have the basic shape of your bird drawn, if you want to, you can go in and add a little more detail. I went in and I drew some lines within the wing to just make it look like it had some feathers. And how I did that was I just started here at the top of the wing and I just drew some long, narrow, smiley faces. So I started at the top and just drew some long, narrow, smiley faces or letter U's across my wing. And then I came down here and I started in the middle of the bottom of the wings I just drew and I drew some more but then made them just shorter. until I got to the edge of my wing, as you can see here. And then I just came down, started at the middle of the bottom 
of the smiley faces I just drew and then connected it to the middle of the next one and just continued that until I got to the bottom of my wing. Now for the tail, all I did was I just drew some straight lines through my tail like this and you can keep it like that if you want or you can make your tail look a little rounded by just drawing some smiley faces connecting the lines of your tail together like this. And then you would erase this straight line right here like this. Now you don't have to do this part. You can just keep your tail straight. You don't even necessarily have to draw feathers in the wing if you don't want to, but that is an option. Or you can create your own feathers. You just use your creativity and go from there. There's the bird. Oh, almost forgot. I also drew a, a horizontal line through the middle of the beak to show the top and the bottom of the beak. So you could do that as well if you wanted to. Now that you have your birdhouse and your bird all drawn, it's time to color them in. Now you can use whatever you want to color in your birdhouse and your bird. I used a mix between marker and crayon. The reason I did that is because I used the marker to outline all my pencil lines because I didn't want to lose the detail of my drawing and my picture when I colored it when I colored in my birdhouse and bird in with crayon. So the marker helped those pencil lines really pop amongst my crayon so I didn't lose my detail. I also used crayon because I wanted the texture of the crayon to help make my birdhouse look like it's been out in the weather for a while. So I kind of wanted it to look rough a little bit and uh, maybe the paint is getting a little chippy or rough looking. So I used my crayon to help me with that texture. Now I also blended my crayon colors together. So I used different shades of oranges and yellow in my shingles. I used blues and purples in my roof, different shades of green in my flowers, I'm sorry, in my leaves. So when you color with your crayons or if you use colored pencils, think about blending your colors together. Now let's talk about the bird for a minute. I tried to resemble a chickadee with my bird. Maybe some of you've seen little chickadees in your yard or some or around your house. Now if you look up in a book a picture of a chickadee, it will not look exactly like this. <laughs> this is not really true to reality of what a chickadee really looks like, but the colors are similar. Again, I just wanted to kind of resemble a chickadee, but you could make your bird red, you can make it blue, you can just have fun coloring the bird um, whichever colors you want to make it. So go ahead, grab the materials you're going to use, and have fun coloring your birdhouse and your bird. Once you have your birdhouse and your bird drawn and colored, go ahead and get your scissors and go ahead and carefully cut out your birdhouse and your bird. Make sure you take your time and do a neat job so you have a nice project in the end. Once you have your birdhouse and your bird cut out, you can go ahead and you can grab your construction paper and go ahead and pick the color you want for your background. This is what you're going to glue your birdhouse and your bird to. Now I chose blue because I wanted it to look like a wintry scene. So you could use a light blue, a dark blue, a purple, 
or maybe there's a different color you'd rather use. So go ahead and grab your construction paper. If you do not have construction paper, either get permission from your supervisor to get some from the art room on the big shelves up front to the right, or you can just grab a piece of white paper and glue onto your white paper. As you can see here, I made a little post to put my birdhouse on top of. I did that by just taking some scrap paper and I just cut out a square or a rectangle and then I just drew some wavy vertical lines down through my square to represent the grain of the wood and I colored it in with my brown crayon. Now you may or may not want to do this step depending on how big your birdhouse is. If you think you're going to need that space up to put your bird, then you don't have to put a post. You can just glue it along the bottom of your paper. But if you want to put a little bit of post for your birdhouse, you can go ahead and make one of those quickly now. Now it's time to start gluing our project together. Now you can either use your white liquid glue or you can use a glue stick. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our birdhouse. Now as you can see, I already have my wooden post glued to the bottom of my paper. I just centered it and lined it up across the bottom and glued that down. So if you made a wooden post, you can go ahead and do that. Then you need to just get your birdhouse and flip it over to the back. And I'm going to go ahead and just use a glue stick for this. And I want to make sure I put plenty all around the edges of my birdhouse. Now if you're using white glue, just be careful, okay? You don't want to overdo it, especially if you used washable markers because if you get too much glue on the back and it oozes all around the edges and gets on your washable marker, it may make your marker bleed. So just remember that as you put your glue on. Center my birdhouse on top of my wooden post. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm leaving enough room at the top of my house to put my bird. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press that down once I get, it, get the house where I want it. All around the edges and, and in the middle. And there's my birdhouse. And now I'm going to take my bird and I'm going to flip him over. I'm just gluing on a scrap piece of paper so I don't get glue all over my table. So if you have a scrap piece of paper, you might wanna go ahead and grab that, help protect your table a little bit. I'm gonna put some glue around my bird and then I'm going to just sit him on the top of my birdhouse. So I'm gonna cover the peak of the house with his body so it looks like he's sitting down on top of it. Then once I get him where I want him, I'll just press down around the edges and through the center to make sure he's on there nice and tight. And there you have it. Sorry about that. I tried to show you it in the last frame and I cut the bird off. So can you see that a little better now? Now that we have all our pieces glued together on our background, we are going to add some snow. And what we're going to do for that is, is I'm just grabbing some scrap piece of paper, just some scrap white paper. This is left over from when I cut my bird in my birdhouse out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make my snow look fluffy. So in order to give the appearance that the snow is fluffy, I'm gonna rip my paper and get some rough edges on my snow. So I'm going to just rip, so you can see here, I'm just making some small rips 
I'm just ripping tiny pieces at a time. This allows me to control my paper a little better as I rip it. And what I'm going to do is I'm making some long strips. And the nice thing is, it's just going to be, oh, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to make some long strips of snow. And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to glue it on the rooftop of my birdhouse to make it look like there's some snow laying on the top of my birdhouse. So I'm just going to take my glue stick, put some glue on the back of my snow. And I'm just going to go like this, press it down so it sticks well, and that gives me some snow. So I'm going to go ahead and rip a few more pieces to put on um, around my rooftop, and then we'll make some snowflakes. Now that I have my snow along my rooftop, and I even put a little bit down here on his little stand, I'm going to make some snowflakes, and I'm going to glue some snowflakes around the bird and the birdhouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that scrap paper again, and I am just going to rip out different sizes of circles to represent some fluffy snowflakes. Again, I'm just making little rips to help control my paper. And then I'm going to take those snowflakes, put some glue on the back. And I'm going to glue them on the background of my project. And I'm going to, again, do different sizes to just give it some variation. So you can put as much snow as you're on your project as you want. And you can even have some snow falling in front of your birdhouse if you want. So go ahead and rip out your snowflakes and glue those onto your project. And then you should have a finished project. Here's a look at the finished project. As you can see, I put different sizes of snowflakes to just make it look a little more interesting and realistic. And you can also notice that I put some over top of the birdhouse and even overlapping just a little bit of my bird to just make it look like it was falling in front of the bird and the birdhouse as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the project for this month. I am so excited to see the beautiful birdhouses and the birds that you came up with. Lord willing, I will be back next month with another project. So till then, take care. Bye.